Hey everybody, welcome again to another one of my videos. In this video I'm going to teach you how to solve compound inequalities. And there are two types of compound inequality problems. You have OR compound inequalities and you have AND compound inequalities. And on the left hand side of the screen I'm going to go over a OR compound inequality example. And on the right hand side of the screen I'm going to go over a AND compound inequality an example. Um, so let's just get started right away. So here on the left hand side we have 2x minus 5 is less than negative 11 or negative 3x plus 14 is less than or equal to positive 2. And the way you would solve this problem is you want to solve each inequality separately. Um, so we'll start, start on the left hand side. We have 2x minus 5 is less than 11 and we want to get x by itself um, so to get x by itself, I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So the negative 5 and positive 5 cancel out. And on the left-hand side, the only thing we're left with is a 2x. The sign stays the same, which is less than. And negative 11 plus 5 is negative 6. So on the right-hand side, we have a negative 6. And once again, we want to get x by itself. So since the x is being multiplied by the 2, I'm, to get rid of that 2, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. The 2's cancel out on the left. And the only thing we're left with on the left-hand side is x. We divided by a positive number. Since we divided both sides by positive 2, the sign stays the same, so it stays less than. And negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. So now we want to solve this second inequality negative 3x plus 14 is less than or equal to 2. Um, so to get x by itself, I'm going to subtract 14 from both sides. The 14s cancel out. And the only thing we're left with on the left-hand side is negative 3x. The sign stays the same, which is less than or equal to. And positive 2 minus 14 is negative 12. So we have a negative 12 on the right-hand side. Now we want to get x by itself, so since x is being multiplied by negative 3, to get rid of that, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. So on the left-hand side, the negative 3's cancel out, and we have x by itself. Since we divided by a negative number, since we divided by negative 3, the sign flips and switches direction. So instead of less than or equal to, it becomes greater than or equal to. And on the right-hand side, negative 12 divided by negative 3 is a positive 4. So the answer to this compound inequality is x is less than negative 3 or x is greater than or equal to 4. So sometimes your textbooks ask you to express your answer in interval notation. So I'm also going to express this in interval notation. The first inequality x is less than negative 3 is all numbers that are less than negative 3 so from negative 3 all the way down to negative infinity so I'm always going to start with a smaller number so we go from negative infinity all the way up until negative 3 and since negative 3 is not included there is no equal sign underneath the less than symbol you can put a parenthesis around negative 3 and the math symbol for the word or is union so you put a union in the middle or x is greater than or equal to 4 so x starts at 4 and goes all the way up until positive infinity um, so since we start at 4 we go all the way up to positive infinity since 4 is included there is an equal sign below the greater than symbol we put a bracket around the 4 in parentheses around the infinity. And now we've expressed our answer in interval notation. And there's one last thing that I would like to point out before I move on to the next example is that the interval notation for OR compound inequalities does not look exactly the same all the time. There are some different types of examples where the answer looks a little different. So I highly suggest that you go over my video about writing answers in interval notation for compound inequalities. So let's move on to our next example. Here we have 3x minus 8 is greater than negative 5 and 
less than or equal to positive 1. And you actually don't see the word and written out, but anytime you see an inequality um, in this type of format, it is always a and inequality. And in order to solve these types of inequalities, you want to get x by itself in the middle. Um, so right now we have 3x minus 8 in the middle, and we want to get x by itself in the middle. Um, so in order to get x by itself, I'm going to add 8 to all sides. So on the left-hand side, we have negative 5 plus 8, which is a positive 3. The sign stays the same, which is less than. In the middle, the negative 8 and positive 8 cancels out, and the only thing we're left with is a 3x. On the right-hand side, the sign stays the same, which is less than or equal to. And 1 plus 8 is positive 9. Now, once again, we want to get x by itself. So since x is being multiplied by 3, to get rid of that 3, we're going to divide all sides by 3. On the left-hand side, we have 3 over 3, which is 1. We divided by a positive number. We divided by positive 3. So the sign stays the same, which is less than. In the middle, the 3s cancel out. And we're left with an x. Once again, we divided by a positive number, positive 3, so the signs stay the same. And on the right-hand side, we have 9 over 3, which is 3. And that is our final answer. And once again, sometimes your textbook asks you to write your answer in interval notation. So I'm also going to express this in interval notation. So here we have x is greater than positive 1, and it's less than or equal to positive 3. So it's greater than 1 and less than or equal to 3. So it starts at 1 and put a parenthesis around the 1 because 1 is not included. There's no equal sign. And it goes all the way to 3. And I'm going to put a bracket around the 3 because 3 is included. There is an equal sign below the less than symbol. And this is our answer in interval notation. And once again, the interval notation for all these compound inequality problems is not always going to look exactly the same. Um, there's going to be some different types of examples that where the answer looks a little bit different. So I highly suggest that you watch my writing compound inequalities video in interval notation, just so you get an idea of what the different types of answers look like and how to write all your answers in interval notation. So I hope this video helped you understand solving compound inequalities just a little bit better. If you need any extra help with live tutoring or homework solutions, please go to my website at mathmeeting.com. Once again, mathmeeting.com, and I would love to help you out. Also, if you like my style of teaching and you want to see some more of my videos, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Twitter or like my Facebook page. Uh, then you can see my videos as soon as I upload them. Uh, once again, thank you so much uh, for watching my video, and take care.